Jello Beats, holla at me. Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. So today I want to talk about the topic of should we just squat? bench and deadlift for optimal hypertrophy and I think this is a topic that's pretty clear now that we can't and that we can't just squat bench deadlift but the idea I think came from some quite good and quite beneficial points of view in that those movements are superb they're great movements for young lifters to learn because they require a huge amount of musculature to perform. So we're hitting big muscle groups, lots of muscle groups, all at once with a big bang for your buck movement. The only issue is, well, the main issue is, is that as we progress, the opportunities to overload those movements starts to get more and more slim. So we have to introduce different new stimuluses in order to take what take the entire plate of hypertrophy if you think of the plate of hypertrophy you, if you're just squat benching and deadlifting or you're just training like a, a power lifter would because i think a lot of these ideas come from the idea that power lifters are pretty jacked and that they have good physiques and and some of them do and the thing that you tend to see in powerlifters is that they have built a lot of dense muscle. And the dense muscle has come from primarily focusing on performing these big compound moves, which train a lot of the musculature of their body, and progressively overloading them. They've added more weight to the bar every time. But guys, what you have to take into account is that a powerlifter has got this specificity of a one rep max in a squat, bench, and a deadlift. That's all they care about. That's their specificity. Our specificity as bodybuilders is maximum muscularity. And that's gonna come as a factor of focusing on three main mechanisms of hypertrophy, muscle damage, mechanical tension, and metabolic stress. To target all three of these with maximum effort and covering all bases, we cannot just squat, bench and deadlift. In my opinion, there comes a bit of time where there's an issue with the bodybuilders that gain significant strength on these moves. Look at Big Ramey squatting. He's squatting like five plates for reps. And he's making it look easy and the reason why big rami makes that look easy is because he's done that time and time again but big rami like those the, the ability for him to do that has come over time 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 building up his legs not only from squatting but from doing leg extensions the high rep sets the bernie sets that he does that target more so metabolic stress those high rep sets that create a lot of lactic acid and a lot of burn now big big ram is squatting like that with ease is because now he's focusing on the idea of quality he wants to produce every single session with the idea of of getting quality reps and, and just making sure that everything is perfect and and the reason for that again moving on as you progress is 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 injury prevention you'll see a lot of these big guys with, with huge legs that, that might not squat anymore and they have squatted trust me they have they've squatted with progressive overload and adding weight to the bar most sessions but there, there will be a point where the injury risk is really really high and they they can't do those movements anymore they, they have to resort to other movements so they, you can't just sort of stick to the basics forever you will have to do stuff like the icing on the cake because at the end of the day the big basic movements will only take you so far i believe that you should lay 80 to 85 percent of your focus on these big basic movements look at some of the best physiques 
they're, so, they're built on doing these movements, these hard movements first up. And then you'll see at the end of their sessions, they're doing the leg extensions, they're doing the curls. Because you're, you're not going to build big biceps by not doing any sort of isol isolated moves. You'll see with powerlifters, they tend to have very large developed backs, backs and erectors and potentially quads, and maybe hamstrings. But their arms, their delts, and their chest will be developed from bench press. But their arms, their delts, and these sort of fluff muscles that we do need as bodybuilders on stage, they won't be so developed. Or bodybuilders that like powerlifting and like powerlifting moves, they leave the stage, they have a focus on, on powerlifting, they actually, they actually sometimes regress. Because you hear in their videos or you hear them saying that they just can't be bothered to do their accessory moves because they're so tired from doing their six sets of three or six sets of two, which, which actually, whilst they're very high intensity and they can get strong as fuck, they're not accruing much training volume. And, and some of these guys, like I'm saying it, they actually regress. Their physiques look worse. And then when they get into a bodybuilding prep, they, they most likely can probably grow whilst in a deficit. And the reason for that is because they haven't had a body, bodybuilding stimulus before, or not for a while. So they're either regaining tissue that they lost throughout their powerlifting phase, or they're actually just building tissue, new tissue from a bodybuilding stimulus. And making sure that as a bodybuilder, our goal is to standardize form in a way that suits hypertrophy. Because bodybuilders are different to powerlifters. Powerlifters have that specificity of a one rep max. And they don't care how it feels on their quads when they squat a thousand pounds. You know, they don't, they don't care about that. They care about getting it from A to B. And as bodybuilders, we should care about how it gets from A to B. You know, does, does Pete Rubish have a, have a bigger back than Dallas McCarver? But Pete Rubish deadlifts more than Dallas. Yes, some genetic factors can influence that. But at the same time, it, it does prove relevance that we should focus on a range of exercises, getting strong at them, standardizing form, and doing a range of things that target all mechanisms of hypertrophy. So yes guys, I hope this video makes sense to you and also provides relevance to Roundup that we should lay a lot of our attention on big basic moves, but to develop as much as we want or develop as much as we can to achieve optimal muscularity and the most muscularity that we can possibly achieve as an athlete, we need to build a balanced approach to that and do stuff that isn't just squat bench deadlift cheers guys and any questions please ask i'll see you in that next video cheers